satisfying is it for you when you know people are counting you out, going down to LA against a team that's supposed to be that good, and you guys completely dominate? Um, it's a great result. Um, you know, I I don't know that I think a lot about um, the doubters. Um, that's gonna happen. It's, that's the part. That's a part of this job. Um, I don't get caught up in that. I don't worry about that. I don't get mad at that. Um, most of the time, I don't even really know what's being said because I just stay focused on the job that I have to do. So, uh, but but you're aware. I mean, people people were doubting us. Um, but after the win, all I care is about is the win. It was a great win. And, you know, arguably it was um, our biggest win in a regular season game uh, in our MLS history because we played it top team, the MLS Cup champions multiple times and we played them on their home field and we played them at full strength and we dominated. Um, so it's I think it's a big milestone to be able to do that and um, and yeah all I can think about is getting the job done in the next game. You know we made a big step the last two games, a couple steps and now we have one more big step to make and we need to take care of business. We know if we get three points that we have a home game. Uh, very least in the knockout who knows but we're gonna take care of business and hopefully be able to play a playoff game in postseason uh, at home and hopefully more do you just kind of treat this game as a playoff game yeah I think so I mean we've kind of been in that mode really the last two games uh, we knew what we had to do and we knew knew our backs were against the wall but in the playoffs that's the way it is you know it's do or die and that's kind of the mindset we've been in and our guys have embraced that you can see even down a goal um, on the road against arguably the best team in the league. We didn't look nervous or rattled. We came out aggressive and we kept going and kept fighting and outplayed them. And uh, I think that's a real good sign uh, to show that maturity. Um, really proud of the guys, the way they looked in that second half. You guys have created a lot of chances this year, but finishing has been up and down. How big was it to kind of you know have a breakout offensive game going into hopefully playoffs. That's big. I was waiting for it. You know, I, I knew, you know, I've been around the block enough to know if you get chances, eventually you get one of these games. And I don't think I thought it would be uh, in one half versus LA. And I'm not sure I thought it would be five goals, but I knew we had it in us. Um, I kept waiting, you know, um, but uh, great for us to get it. And, you know, it is the type of result that can um, push us uh, and give us a boost that will hopefully carry us into the playoffs, and we'll, we'll try to ride that momentum. That's that's you know that's important that you have momentum going in. Did you know Chara could jump that high? <laughs> His first first uh, goal from a head header, so it was great. He was he was outstanding, and you know I think he showed in the last two games, even though we held him in, that he still was able to get forward at times. So I think he managed that position really well, and. The central three were, were outstanding in both the last two games and a big part of us winning. But it was everybody across the board. We got good performances. And when you get good performances, uh, you have a good chance to win. Did you see signs leading up to that game that, that an explosion like that was in the works? Well, again, I think because we've been playing well and we've get, been getting chances, it was, um, you know, it was tough to not uh, get frustrated because things, you know, in terms of play, things were, things were good. Um, you know, so the coach in me uh, felt that it could happen, and you know that was what, why I continued to believe in the guys and continued to, um, you know, talk in a positive way. It wasn't fluff; it was me actually believing it. And uh, you know, when you actually believe it and it's genuine, your players know it. And uh, even at halftime, down a goal, uh, we never doubted that we could come back and get that goal. There were signs of that, and there were also signs that LA wasn't sharp on the day. So. We knew in the second half that we could capitalize on that a bit. You went with the same formation that you used against Salt Lake. Can you talk about why that was? You guys were able, why you made that decision, and why you think it was has been effective. Well, um, you know, I think as a coach, you always have to think about: do you fit the players to the system, or do you fit the system to the players? Uh, there's always a, you know, an idea. Uh, back and forth with that at times. Um, every coach has their preferred systems, but there comes a time where maybe you need to look at adapting and, and changing your system to fit the players that are healthy. So in the case of Will Johnson and, and Jack Chewsbury being out, uh, we felt that to get our best 11 on the field, uh, 
that a change of system was the right thing to do at that time. Um, but also we felt that in the Salt Lake game that it was the right system versus the opponent. So when you look at adapting the system to fit the players, but also that it, it fit in that game versus the opponent, um, that it made sense to do that also under the circumstances of us maybe not scoring uh, gave us an extra attacker on the field. So all those layers went into us making that decision versus Salt Lake. After Salt Lake, you know, we talked a lot about do we go back to, to holding mids and go more conservative. We're playing a, you know, a better team, bigger field. Uh, we got the three points. You know, we knew a draw would, would be enough to, to set up the last game to control what we were going to do. And um, we just decided to stick with it and go for it. Um, you know, a lot of that, again, had to do with L.A., looking at their 4-4-2, looking at the two holding mids that they had, Janino and Gerard. Uh, most teams just let them attack, and we felt that looking to pin those two guys back and put pressure on them and make them defend was a was an important part of winning that game, and, and that's what we did. Even down a goal, we didn't get uh, you know tentative. We went aggressive, and um, you know I thought in the second half we made them defend. And when you make a team like that defend, then they can't attack, and they're not really built to defend for long periods. They're built to attack, and so you know, and looking at. Um, their game, or looking at that game and their team, we just we felt it would work, leaving Chara free in front of the back four to be able to manage the space in front of the back four, uh, which is a space that Keen and Dos Santos look to check into all the time. So, you know, again, it's not just me, it's the staff. We sit in there and we, we think about things and we make decisions and, um, you know, it, it paid off. Yeah, how big has Audi been? Obviously, he now has 15 goals. Um, how big has he his performance been for you guys this year? Adi is uh, has never been more bought in. Um, he loves loves it here. He wants to win. Guys love him. Uh, he's playing hard. He's playing big. You know, I, <laughs> I send him a text before every game, and it's basically just, I say play big and play mean. You know, and you know he's a guy that. As big as he is, sometimes he doesn't play that big, or in the past he hadn't, but he's learning to embrace how big and strong and, and mean he can be. Uh, you know, and he, he was, he's matched up against some of the best in the league, Chad Marsh and Omar Gonzalez, and, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, he's given them problems because he has a world-class body. I mean, he is a specimen, but he's only a specimen if he uses the body and bangs guys and, you know, plays big and plays strong and plays mean. And that's what he's doing. And he's finishing his chances as well. The goal he scored uh, where he turned and struck it with his left foot, I mean, that's a finisher's goal. Um, he hasn't scored that goal, you know, in the past. You know, he's scored goals that have fell into him, you know, in the right spot. But, you know, that's a poacher goal. You know, he needs to be more of a poacher at times and create chances for himself. And, you know, that's a half chance. He was able to finish it. Um, so real happy with his evolution as a player. and. Like I said, he just needs to continue to remember how big and strong he is. And, you know, if he plays like that, he's tough to manage. Has there been a frustration at times with it, his development with the team and how have you dealt with some of his, you know, drier spells? Yeah, no, never frustration. Um, you know, guys go through uh, ups and downs. Uh, he's still, in my opinion, still, you know, a young player. Um, you forget that sometimes. Um, he's still learning, still evolving. You know, still embracing his role, and I think as a coach, you have to define a player's role. You have to uh, look at them for not uh, not only what they're not good at, but look at what they're good at and play to those things. And that's what we try to do with Adi: is simplify his game, make him a true target, play to his strengths where he holds the ball up. And if you notice, he's playing a lot more simple when the ball's into him. He's not taking extra touches. He's just popping it off quick. You know, and then he's getting on the end of things and. Uh, you know, so I think simplifying his game was a key and um, continuing to reinforce his strengths and playing to those strengths and not necessarily always trying to make everybody's weaknesses better, but just make sure the strengths are highlighted. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Adi. And, uh, but the biggest thing is he's, like I said, bought in. He's really bought in. He wants to win. He's hungry. Um, he loves this team. They, like I said, the guys uh, really have embraced him. and really pleased with what he's doing for us. Lucas Milano was a big part of the first two goals as well. Uh, has, does this formation, does this setup play to his strengths or, or is this just a, a step forward for him in general? Um, 
I think if you get it right with your formation, like I said, fitting to the, the players you want on the field, then it should play to everybody's strength. You know, that's the goal is you got pieces of the puzzle and you put the right formation in place and the right plan in place, then everybody's really just doing their job and doing what they're good at. Um, if you have guys, you know, looking like a fish out of water, if you have guys trying to do things they're not good at, and if their roles and responsibilities aren't defined or if the, the system maybe in their role doesn't fit, you know, then you start to get lack of cohesion. We've had that in a few games. Um, so last two games, I think it's looked like guys are in the right spots and the formation is fitting and working, um, you know, but we have some challenges coming into this, different challenges coming into this weekend. It's a different game. It's a different opponent, um, you know. So Larry's out, so we have that. We got a yellow, so he's out in the game. I'm sure you guys knew that. So we got to look at now with him out, what do we do? Speaking of the next game, where do Jack and Will stand? And how are they coming along? Um, so Will trained full out today. Um, you know, still building his fitness. He's been out four weeks, um, but he's making progress. Physically looks good. Just, you know, like I said, the match fitness needs to come. And then. Uh, Jack didn't train today, but he was doing some stuff in the field, running and striking balls. So we're hoping by the end of the week with him, we'll be back in training. So with that said, with all the success with the formation, Valeri yeah. out, um, yeah. does that mean we won't see that formation, or you still got it inside? Well, I mean, it's, again, with him out, it changes things. You know, definitely changes things. So going back to what system fits the 11 that we want to get in, it, it might change it. It might. Um, so... We wish, we wish that wasn't a. We wish there wasn't a decision on that, right? And we'd obviously just stick with it. But with Larry out, then we gotta hash it out again. Sit in there, figure it out, talk about it, see you know where Will's at, see where Jack is at. You know, is there a different thing we can do? You know, we don't want to be changing every every game. That's for sure. But um, we're very comfortable now out of a couple different systems. So we know we can play 4-2-3-1. That's easy, seamless. We've done that all year. Or we can keep playing the same system and plug in a different guy in the center of the park. How important is it that you have a guy like Chara that you, I mean, I'm guessing without him, switching these formations isn't as easy? Yeah, I mean, you can't, you know, and there was a question a little bit, can, would that role fit Chara? You know, because he does like to get around. Um, certainly he has the ability to do it, but... Um, you know, we, we didn't know exactly how it would look, you know, but uh, we felt he could do it. We tried to simplify the role for him, and we asked him to do a job, and uh, he did a job and more, um, and it fit him really well. And I think he liked the fact that he was back there alone and, and uh, you know, everything was on him to, to sort it out and to organize it and to win balls. And, um, you know, he has the ability to do that. He's a natural ball winner. He's tenacious. He's very athletic. Um, but positionally, he's shown a lot of uh, maturity in the last two games because it's difficult with one. Sometimes you get dragged out all over, and we played two good teams, good attacking teams. And I think Darlington helping as well is a factor. If you notice, the deeper we got, Darlington dropped in and, and helped Chara. You know, so I think that's the other side of it. We wondered how Darlington would do um, playing as kind of an eight, which is really how he's playing. You know, we have it you know, shaped up as a one holder, two attacking mids, but really it's it's a six and eight and a ten um, if you want to define it. So you're you're really playing with Chara as the holder. Uh, Darlington is the, kind of the, the mid-mid, linking midfielder, rhythm player, and then Valeri's the ten, the creator. And so in theory, the three we felt could do really well together, but we didn't know would it be too light in the middle defensively, but it, but it hasn't been. A big part of it not being light is we have more attack and we're not defending as much. You know, So when you draw your lines of how you want to attack and defend and the balance, uh, we were definitely pushing it a little bit towards the attack and I think it's taken some pressure off us defending. We're, we're getting more possession, we're threatening the opponent more, which means now they have to worry about us more and defend more. Um, you know, and so I think that 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 balance of where you draw your lines in the sand, I think, has been interesting the last two games. Is maybe we're not as good defensively, in theory, but we don't have to defend as much with those guys on the field. You mentioned on uh, the extra time radio yesterday about 
talking to Klinsman about Nagby getting called up. Can, can you speak to that a little more? What have those Yeah, I've been in touch with, with Jurgen a lot. And he's well aware of Darlington. He likes him. He told me a while ago that he was going to bring him in at the right time. Um, so when that right time is, I don't know. You know, maybe it's November, maybe it's January. Um, but, but he's told me he definitely likes him and wants to bring him in. I think the challenge is they have qualifiers. They have they had the Gold Cup. They had you know some games, and it's difficult to bring a guy in for the first time in, in some of those camps. So that's really the the reason he hasn't been in. So you know we'll see when he comes in. But he's told me he likes him. He's aware of him. He's on the radar, and he wants to bring him in. It just has to be the right time. And the other side of it, he, he's not cleared yet. He will be in the next several weeks, hopefully. But um, he's well aware of Darlington and likes him. Um, and this last question. One more. Uh, yeah. With Colorado, it's kind of game that you know can come off maybe is almost a trap game if you take it too lightly given that they're the last place teams how do you approach this to make sure um, you know you don't take them too lightly I guess yeah it's, I mean we won't take it lightly it's, we've got so much at stake I mean you worry about that sometimes in the regular season because you're not always sure although points are points and I say it every week players don't always understand that one game in like the 22nd game or the 19th game the urgency for points so they know the urgency for the points here and they know that if we get a, uh, a win and three points that we get a home game so we will not take this game lightly thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys thanks a lot